Okay guys, good afternoon. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Again, this is your host, Santos Capellan Jr. Always wishing you a good day. Guys, today, this part, part 18, what I'm going to do is to uh, explain to you my main exhaust fan program. Okay, I already explained the healthy program. The script program for healthy alarm generation, then the EF and EF to run hours generation. Okay, now in this uh, episode, I will try to explain the EF main program. Okay, now EF main program is responsible for the automatic operation of this equipment. Okay, so this is my equipment. So this is my graphics. So my EF main program will be the one to alternate EF1 and EF2 or it will be the one to sequence, okay, then raise some alarm, okay. Now, uh, so let me walk you through with my program. Let me first share this screen. New share, okay, so this is script. Share, okay, so this is my script program. Okay, now, uh, so EF main program. So I have around at the top are my variable declaration. Okay. So line seven program starts here. Okay. So I have line nine line EF stop. Now I have a line EF stop wherein there will be a scenario wherein your fans or your exhaust fan will be in off condition. For example, there is fire, so it should be. Oh, okay, so, so that's why I have a line here. Stop. Okay, then line number 14, I'm instructing or I'm giving a jump instruction. Go to line EF check. Okay, so line EF check, go to EF check. So this is the line EF check. Line number 16. Okay, so what are the instructions inside the line EF check? So I have here number 19, line 19, checking for fire alarm. So if there is fire, I'm giving an instructions, meaning if fire alarm is true, now I have here my variables, okay? So my variables, let me show you the variables. So these are all the variables there, okay? So if fire alarm, meaning if there is fire, if there is fire, then, okay, so fire alarm, where are you, fire alarm? Okay, so this is fire alarm. If there is fire alarm, okay. If there is fire alarm, next line 20 go to EF stop. So it will go back to line EF stop. Then my instruction there is turn off the F1 and turn off EF2. EF1 is start stop command is off. Likewise, the EF2 start stop command is uh, off. Okay. Now, then again, it will go to go to EF check and it will come to EF line EF again. Then if there's no fire, then it will go down. Now, the, the checking is sequential or the interpreting or the compiler will execute line by line. Okay. Now, there is no fire, then it will go to 22, empty, 23, checking of time, command, if time schedule. Okay. Now, it's checking if time schedule. Now, time schedule, if the, it will make your system or your funds run when it is needed. Because there is a time in the day where maybe it's about from 12 to 5 a.m., we can turn off this exhaust fan. In that way, we are conserving energy. Okay, so we are implementing green building. Okay. Then, if, it is, if time schedule is false, then uh let's say time schedule here is true then this one is not true then it will be skipped so it will go to uh, line 27 now if it is true then it, there, there is an instruction again to go back to ef stop so again it will go up ef stop there okay so let's say time schedule is on then it will check for op ef force start okay so again there is a condition wherein it will check if the operator is trying to force the exhaust fan number one to start, okay? So that is the checking of copy EF1 start. Then likewise, it will check also for copy EF2 force start, okay? Now, if those conditions are not true, so it will go to line 35. This 
time, it will check for run request. This run request is being manipulated in our uh, EF run accumulation program. Okay? So if it is true, then our handoff auto status is true and operator enable is true and fire alarm is false and EF1 trip is false, then start EF1. Okay? Else, if this is not condition is true, then it will go to this else condition. Okay? So this is an if then else control structure. Okay? So let's say these conditioners are not met, then it will go to the next instruction. If EF2 run request, the same logic. Okay, if it's true, then EF2 will start. Okay, so if those conditions are not true, then I have here an instruction to check if there's a trip or if the, the selector switch of the exhaust pan number one was put to manual and there is a run request, then go to EF fault. Okay, so because there is a fault condition in EF, maybe it trips or maybe the selector switch was put to manual while run request is two, okay? Then you go to EF1 port. So it will jump to line EF1 port, then I have the instruction there. Now, what are the instructions inside EF1 port? You will, you will turn off the command for EF1 because there is port. Then the run request, you will turn it off, okay? You will override the run request at EF1 runtime accumulation, then EF run 2 will be on, okay? Then you will check, is EF2 is in auto, and there's no trip, and there's no fire alarm, then start EF2, because there is fault in EF1, okay? Then, again, you will go to EF check. You will not, you will not come here. You will come here only if there is an EF2 fault, okay? So go to EF check, then again, you are going back to EF check line. Okay, where is EF check line? Okay, here, line here. So you will repeat executing all the instruction here. Let's say you have EF2 fold. EF2 fold, so EF2 trip. EF2 is running, then there's a trip. Then you will instruct your script to go to EF2 fold. Now, EF2 fold, the same logic, okay? Then, if the instructions are performed, then you have a jump instruction, go to EF check, okay? So, it will be a never-ending looping, okay? Because our plot type is looping, okay? Now, I have an advice here. Make sure that you will not have a scenario wherein, let's say, you are in line EF to fold. You don't have this one. So, uh, it will be just looping in this. So it will not be able to scan the different scenario. Okay? So it will stay here. So don't forget, once these instructions are done, go out of that line. That's why I have here go to EF check so that, again, you will be scanning every line of your script program. Okay? So that is one of my advice because that is the common error that you might encounter, okay? So again, this is the control logic program that is trying to control this system, okay? Now, let's see. That control logic program is running at the background, okay? I can say it's running at the background. Now, I will start, okay. As you can see, my... EF main program, which is responsible in starting this funds when it is in automatic, is working fine. I mean, it's doing its job. Okay? So, it stopped because the sequence is greater than our set point. So, it started the EF1. So, that is being controlled by the main EF script program. For the sequencing, it is controlled by EF1 for EF1. EF1 run hours program, okay? Then this one is controlled by my EF healthy program, okay? So that is the reason why you need to uh, divide, divide your entire script logic program for the entire operation of this equipment so that it will be very easy for you to debug or troubleshoot, troubleshoot your control logic program, okay? So once again, guys, this is part 19 or part 18 
of my series uh, script programming tutorial for BACnet controllers. So once again, before I will end, if you are new to my channel, please help me promote my channel by subscribing. Like, share, and you can also click the notification bell if you want to be notified if there is a new upload in my channel. Thank you very much for watching. And before I will end the tutorial, I will always say God bless us all and bye for now.